Hello, hello, we are live. Happy Wednesday. Hello to Terry and Mariah. Thanks for joining me. Mar um, Terry has graciously volunteered <laughs> after I asked her to be a moderator on the channel. So I'm really happy for that. So she can help us with grabbing links and to shops and channels and all that kind of fun stuff. So I'm doing cordage today. How is everybody's Wednesday? Oh, I didn't even check for shadow. I'm told myself I'm not going to think about shadows. I'm going to just let things go. So I am getting some of my long strands ready. Hey, Midge, how are you today? Hi, Mary. What are you guys working on today? Mariah is prepping for rusty gel plate printing. That will definitely be something I will go back and check out. All right, there's gonna be some back and forth here. When we get a bunch of people here, then I'll maybe show what I'm doing here on my leg. Don't wanna make you dizzy by moving the camera back and forth. Hey, Tunder, how are you doing today? Hey, let's get, maybe I'll do one more. Hi, Cheryl, how are you doing today? Happy to have you join us. So these are leftover threads. And this is a combination of, of sewing threads, like ancient threads. Hi, Penny, that I have, you know, or leftover things, you know, when you're done with the sewing machine and there's just a little bit left and you can't, you know, it isn't worth adding it little bits of fibers. And then I've also got the, um, that little fuzzy stuff when we work with the sari silk, you know, and you get the little fuzz balls when you, you know, fray the edges or do something with that. And this works really well to help hold threads together, but you could also use a little bit of wool roving if you wanted to. Hey, Brenda, boy, I set this camera so that you guys <clears throat> could see better and it's right in the middle of where I would be looking for the chat. Oh, well, there's always technical adjustments to make, right? So Midge is working on book covers and Tunder just finished filming how she rusts fabric. Oh, that's awesome. Make sure you share that link in the group, okay? Because I know there's a lot of people that want to uh, know more how to do that. All right, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of the fuzzies I'll add that little bit of fiber, but the fuzzies kind of help hold things together. And you can make this as thick or as thin as you want. I thought I'd try and see if I could do these <clears throat> a little thinner than my other ones, but there is no rhyme nor reason to me, at least. Maybe there is to you. And then I wet it because it helps the fibers hold together. And then I just start rolling it back and forth. Just a little bit to get it to start to stay. Now the best way to do this the rest of the way, you wanna have a long stretch that you can roll up and roll back again, because that tightens it up. And so I usually do this on my thigh. And again, this is just to get my long pieces together. I love rusted fabric and rusted papers. So the indigenous tribes used to do this on their bare legs. The men would do the, the rolling to make the cordage, at least from the research that I was reading. And then if it doesn't feel like it's sticking together, you know, the nice thing is these are just little scrap pieces, so you're not hurting anything. If they don't quite work, they don't hold together, then just start over. All right, so I have a piece to get started with. And now I'm going to I don't want it to be in half because if I do it in half, 
what's going to happen is when I join the next pieces to each end, the joins are going to be in the same spot, which will make it a little bit weaker. So I'm going to go where it's offset. Brenda's got a new video up. And what I'm going to do to start, and you can do this either direction. I'm twisting one away and one toward me. One away, one toward me. Or you can just hold one, and I'll just keep twisting this one toward me. And I'm going to keep doing that. Helps if you get your fingers wet. Helps hold on to things. Hey, Shelby. And you keep doing that until it starts to twist. Let's see if you can see that. See how it's starting to twist on itself? Uh, where can I get it where you can actually focus? I turned the autofocus off so I didn't make people seasick. Okay, so it's just starting to twist on itself. And as it starts to do that, I just, so it's not twisted enough for me. I got a little bit of a twist. Just come up here and grab that twist. And then I'm gonna, and that, that's it. That's the hardest part. And a lot of times I have to stop it and start it again. Then I'm just gonna twist away and bring it over. Twist away from me and then bring it over while I'm pulling the one underneath behind. So I'm gonna twist away. And then my finger here is gonna grab the other piece and bring it forward. And I will be going over the beginning of this again when Barbara is able to join us a little later on because she's the one that asked for this today. But she wasn't able to join at the beginning. So I'm just going to twist away and come over the top. Twist away, come over the top. And that's it. That means I can keep doing this and chatting. Ha <laughs> ha. That's what I love about this. I can, you know, if I'm doing it with grasses out in the yard, I can walk around the yard and do it. What are you working on today, Shelby? Are you still making yo-yos? Shelby has gone apps. Oh, there you go. Are you getting an echo? Is anybody else getting an echo? Let's see. Oh, maybe I don't have something turned off here. I see your wrench now, Terry. You are in blue with a wrench, so you are free to add links. There, did that fix the echo? Hopefully I turned off. Um, Terry, if you have YouTube open in two spots, that will give you an echo. You'll have to mute it in one spot. Hey, Jojo. How are you doing today? Jojo has a video up. Um, and Terry, when you get a chance, if you could grab it, she is working with my mermaid kit. And so she did a flip through of all the pages in the kits and it was really fun to see. I can't wait to see what she's doing. Have not seen Victoria yet today, so I don't know. Shelby has moved on to hexes. Okay, so you have a suitcase full of uh, yo-yos. Now you're going to do hexes. Yeah, I haven't seen or heard from, from her, so I'm, I'm really glad that Terry was able to uh, step in here because it's just too hard for me to grab links. And I really, you know, I love this to be a bulletin board where you guys can all share your shops and channels. It is, you know, it does take patience, Tunder, but it's one of those, like, it's a great TV activity. So I can sit down and do this, you know, while we're watching TV and I don't have to feel like I'm not being useful because I'm one of those people that can't just sit and watch TV. I got to be doing something else at the same time. So see, it's just starting to form the cordage. And I'm just loving, I'm excited because I bought myself a little loom, a tabletop loom. So then I want to weave with the cordage and then see if I can do some embroidery on top of that. So are all the yo-yos going to be for using in journals and slow stitching or do you have a project in mind, Shelby? And see how stuff starts to fall down like that. I just, 
I'm not trying to make absolutely perfect where everything's the same length. Oh, you don't watch TV Tender? Well, that's why you get so much done, right? It's baseball season here, so I've got to watch my baseball. It's a nice way to de-stress. My husband has a very stressful job, so it's a great way for us to kind of de-stress in the evenings. And it gets me away from, you know, I'm trying to not be on the computer in the evening since I'm on there so much during the day. So just kicking back, the TV's on, I can work on this. Yeah, you have a lifetime supply. Well, you can start selling those because there's other people that don't like to make them. I have some. A friend sent me a few and I need to, when I get back to the actual finishing slow stitching projects, Jojo, I'm as soon as Barbara Clark is able to join us, she has another um, session that she has to go to today, and then she'll be in to join us, and then I'll do a beginning again to show people how it starts. I know it's not everybody's thing. So what do you what else does everybody have a lifetime supply of? I probably have a lifetime supply of. Oh, Barbara's here. Awesome. All right. Well, let's see. We'll start another pink one and then I'll come back to this. I'll use it as a starter. So Barbara, what was the problem that you were having? Is it the, the actual beginning of something or was it the, uh, the, the starting, the twisting, the making the long threads? What was it that you were having issues with? Zoe obviously wants to know more. Hey, Barbie. Glad you were able to join us. So this is what I start with. For those of you that are just coming in, just start with my threads, whatever I've had. I just have my threads sorted by colors. You could certainly add in some white if you want some variety. So let me make this one a little thicker and see if it'll show up a little better. Yeah, it's it's hard not being able to remember, Barbara. And I meant to put something on the, um, I mean, it's got the regular Facebook reminder. I'll make this one nice and thick. But it uh, doesn't always send out those notifications. Hey, Barbara, glad you could join us. All right, so I just pile up my threads and then I get them wet because it's much easier to make them stick together. Barbara ha or um, Brenda has a lifetime supply of green twine. Somebody gave me a spool a foot high and six inches thick. I will never use it all. <laughs> So Barbara says, I found a different artist making cord and the place I missed was twisting the small strand away and then just twisting. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and start this one since we do have some new people that came in. So I, I wet it to get the stuff to stick together. And I try to make a long first piece just so I can get, it just sort of feels good <clears throat> to have something going. All right, and I'll show you what I really do when I'm doing this on my own, if you can see my leg, is I take it down here on my thigh and I roll it, it needs to be wetter. You don't want your pants wet, you just want the threads wet. Roll it down and roll it back. Roll it down and roll it back. And that makes the threads really cling enough that you can make the next step. And roll it down and back. And you can do it tabletop. I just, when I'm by myself and I'm not worrying about the camera, I just go down my leg really fast. The first one I really try to get super tight. The rest of them, I don't care if the stuff starts to fall out. 
All right, so then I'm just gonna start twisting it. I don't wanna start in half because you don't want your joins to be in the same spot. Sorry for repeating those of you that were here at the start of the hour. I wanna make it off center a little bit so the joins will be in different places. Okay, and for me, even though I'm right-handed, I guess this is the left-handed way, but the same thing works. I'm holding it in one hand and I'm just gonna keep twisting it. Until it starts to twist on itself. And that gives me my little knot at the top. Kind of hard to see with all my knotted threads. And then I just hold that knot. I'm gonna twist away and up and over. Twist away, pull the other one behind me, up and over. So I'm always twisting the one that's at the back. So I'm twisting that and it's always gonna be away from me. So if you're doing it in the other hand, be the same thing, but I'm gonna twist the one in the back away from me. And I'm gonna pull that towards the front and then I'm gonna use my fingers just to kick this one to the back. And you really need to make sure that you are constantly holding this tight. Let me go to my one that I had started because I'm closer to a join here. So I'm gonna twist it away from me and kick the other one behind. And I'm ready for a join. So I'm gonna wet my fingers because it helps st stuff stick. And I'm just gonna lay another one right on top. Kind of twist it a little bit. I'm gonna twist it away. And then I'm gonna take the back and push it out. And you kind of get to where you're used to twisting these at the same time that you're moving your finger down. See, I wonder if I can do this at a different angle. Um, this will be strange maybe. Maybe this will be a little better angle. If I'm twisting it away, needs to maybe be up a little. Twist it away and then I'm gonna kick this back. Twist it away. I'm gonna kick this one back. Does that help? Twist it away, back and over. Okay, so this one didn't wanna stay, that's fine. Just gonna add it back in again. And when you do a join, you can try and be really nice and tidy there, but for me, sometimes I like to just have something overlapped. It makes the join go easier. And then you have like the little, um, like on this one, then you have the little pieces hanging out and I kind of like that rustic look. And I mean, if you want to make very precise, what does it make it thicker? Well, it makes not only makes it thicker, the twisting like this, I mean, it makes it stronger. So, you know, if I just have my pile of blue threads, if I have a pile of blue threads, I can roll it and make a strand, but I can't really do much with it unless maybe if I was gonna do some couching on embroidery. But by twisting it into cordage, it's stronger. I could use it for a tie. I could definitely use it for couching and I can use it for weaving, which is what I wanna do. You know, and you could take your three strand, you could take strands like these and braid them and just have um, a regular braid, which we you know, all know how to do, I think. <laughs> so now I've got really thin pieces here that don't wanna stay. I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm just gonna, let's find my backside here. And I'm going to grab a little bit of the sari silk, 
which is kind of like glue. It really is. And just kind of use that to twist those in there. All right, so that one's thicker. You know, and if you want like really precise cordage, you could um, you could just use like if you have embroidery floss and colors that you don't like, you could use that. I've got a big mess here, so it's just telling me pink is not my color. Four inches, awesome, that's terrific. Yeah, this one is not cooperating with me today. What did I do? All right, there we go. That's why I had a big mess. All right, I got my back one. I am going to just make a really big overlap. My camera screen is flickering, huh? It is, I don't know. We should have plenty of bandwidth. I don't have anything else. Yeah, I just, I think, I think it happens and I don't know why it's happening. Boy, this one does not want to go together. All right, let's go to the other end. You know, I don't have a whole lot of, yeah, sorry on the squiggly lines. I don't know that there's anything I can do on that. I know Patty was having that the other day. Uh, there might be some internet issues that I don't know about. All right, I'm, I'm going to modify and I'm actually gonna do joins at the same time. I am not sure, let's see. I can't close that out. Don't really have anything else that I can close out. Does that help a little? Maybe that helped. All right, I closed out the other screen, so I'm just using the iPad. Nope, it's still there. I have no idea. Well, if it sticks with it and it doesn't want to go away, then I will um, make this a short one. Let's see if I get rid of this and I do only that. All right. Yeah, I no idea. Sorry about that. I know that's really frustrating, especially if you're somebody that gets seasick. It can be really crazy. I do find that um, probably keeping my strands at about, like these might be a little long, at about 8 to 10 inches works so they don't get too tangled underneath. And then keeping my fingers damp. Hey, Gadgety Mouse. Um, yeah, everything should be plugged in fine. Oh, it's going to be hard for me to read the chat on that little stuff. Don't my hands get tired? Yeah, so, you know, at the end of, of the live, I won't do any more of this today. I'll, um, I'm dying, coffee dyeing a bunch of fabric and paper, and I'll do something different. But it's like anything else repetitive, uh, you know, slow stitching, I have the same kind of an issue. Barbara says, I've got a ton of strips from a quilt that use three quarter, three eighths inch strips, all hand dyed fabric. Oh my goodness. That's going to be amazing. All right. So I heard that Brenda has a lifetime supply of, uh, of what? She's got a lifetime supply of green twine or green. Is it green twine or green wire? I want to know what else the rest of you have a lifetime supply of. Hey, Mitzi. And I went back to my big screen to see if I can see it a little better. Twine. Okay, so you have twine. See, you could absolutely um, do cordage with your twine. You could weave. Anybody here done any weaving? I'm super excited to put my loom together. Should I do that on a video? 
I've never done any kind of weaving before, except for maybe in day camp, like 60 years ago. So I was thinking maybe I will turn the camera on and you guys can watch me fumble through that first step. So I was thinking if I could use uh, fabric strips for some weaving, that would be good too. Oh, binding bales of hay. Wow. Oh, I love interesting fibers. If you were in the States here, I'd swap you for something. Barbie has maybe two lifetimes worth of paint. Yeah, I got a lot of paint too. Midge is doing a single row of tatting from a friend. You have a single row of tatting from a friend? Very cool. Barbie's made baskets. Nice. And Barbara says, I've woven two little pieces. I bought one of those little clover looms that makes four inch squares or four by eight inch rectangles. Ooh, nice. Marjorie's got a lifetime supply of quilt patches. Mine, mom's, grandma, and auntie's all scrap quilters. Oh, that's exciting. Hi, Marjorie. I don't think I said hi to you. Barbara's got a lifetime supply of sheer chiffon curtains. Ooh, you know, have you seen? I have got a video um, where I've made book covers by uh, journal covers by gluing book text down on something and then you put the sheer fabric over it and then stitch on it. Oh, that's sweet, Brenda. Evidently, some of this is not color fast. I can see the pink on my fingers, which will accent with the coffee that is on my fingers. So the sheer fabric is amazing. I love using sheer fabric. You can do so much with it. I keep finding more things to do with them. I probably have a lifetime supply of embroidery floss that I'm not going to use. So I think I'm going to start weaving with some of that because I kept buying it when I would find it in the thrift stores. And then I find that I am actually doing my slow stitching with pearl cotton. Gadgety Mouse says, um, I have a lot of vines that need to be cut constantly, but it gets brittle when it dries. Oh, so what you do with vines, and any of you that have done basket weaving can, can chime in, is then you have to wet it. So when I have, let's see, do I have anything handy? Ah. So this is some cordage that was made with grass. And it's pretty dry now, you know, it's, it's very dry now and very brittle. And I would not be able to, okay, see, here's the ends of it. There's no way it's going to, it's going to bend and it's going to break if I try to, to do anything with it, but you wet it, you um, put it in either a tub of water or wrap it in a wet paper, a wet towel. And by doing that and getting it rehydrated, then you can use it and then it dries out. You know, that's what the basket weavers do. They have to wet their stuff. They don't weave the baskets with the stuff wet because if you weave when it's wet or when it's fresh, then it dries and it shrinks and everything kind of falls apart. Okay, Brenda, thank you. Barbie says baskets weren't my favorite thing, but I'm glad I tried it. You also have a lot of sheer curtains. Yeah, so I, Terry, I can't remember what the name of the video was called where I did the book text. I think it says book text covers. And yeah, if you, um, Barbara, if you dyed some, that makes awesome. My favorite of the book text covers is one where I just did it patchwork over the book text. And, you know, of course, the I bought shears originally just thinking, well, they make great flips because they don't take a lot of space in the journal. And then I realized when I, you know, took a look at how many shears I had, I've got, you know, probably a stack over a foot tall. So see, this is why you don't want them quite as long as I made them is that they do get tangled. But I just, I really love it. I love it when there's little bits hanging out.
Hey, Cheryl, how are you doing today? <clears throat> Cheryl says, I have a lifetime supply of watercolor paint and I'm terrible at watercolor. I keep thinking if I get another set, I'll get better. Not happening. <laughs> I have a lot of watercolor paint too for exactly the same reason. The only thing I can do with watercolor is just put one color down. I can't seem to do anything else. Ah, so I just actually watched something on Ruffles and was going to do the video on it. Um, you know, I would do just to, to do a ruffle, I would cut a strip. It would be wider than this, but I would cut a strip maybe like about two inches and then just do a running stitch down the center and gather it and you can get some really interesting effects that way. But as far as a ruffle, you get more of a poof, I guess. Yeah, Gadgety Mouse, just, you know, cut them. I have a big old stack of grapevines that my in-laws cut for me and they're just sitting outside. And then when I get ready to do something with them, I will rehydrate them. Yeah, Barbie, I bet you have a lot of uh, leftover threads too, right? It's just so much fun. Barbara says, I painted vellum with watercolors and sprayed it with acrylic and it looks awesome. Ooh, so the watercolors actually did something on the vellum. They didn't just like all pool. Kind of like working with alcohol ink in it. Oh, Jojo says, I have a lifetime supply of scissors. Amen. Yep. <laughs> I have four pairs of scissors that I put aside when I sat down here, you know, to get going because none of them were sharp enough to cut anything. Barbie, are you working on a journal right now? What's the theme that you're working on? I still need to get those other leaves up that I told you about. Yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do with pink cordage. I might end up dyeing this when it gets done because I don't really work with pink. I love doing things that can get color on vellum because it's just such a great, you know, paper to use. I mean, I do a lot with tracing paper, but vellum, you know, being a little stiffer, you can use it for some nice pages. It'll hold up. An idea journal. Ooh, so then you'll always have a place that you can remember you know what you want to do with the different bits of a journal that's always a good idea i don't have the patience to put together an idea journal i don't know why hey victoria had to taylor's covid home testing kit we have to test them every wednesday and sunday at home now oh wow Let's see if I can read the small print here. Barbara says, I'm using my raw material snarl or those threads trim off. Yep, absolutely. Lots of colors, short pieces. Just found a cat hair dust ball. And I have used um, dog hair to make one too. Oh, yeah. So you haven't reached critical mass yet, Jojo. <laughs> Yeah, I just had my husband grab another set the last time he went to Costco, grab a set of, you know, the cheap scissors so that I can have those around for paper. I keep, you know, guarding my one pair of really nice <clears throat> fabric scissors, but I need to get a small set of embroidery scissors. I thought I had one that was still, oh, here's my one. Oh, interesting, Victoria, like a pregnancy test. Huh. Huh. So is this for school because they're back in session that you have to do this? I guess because the kids aren't able to get vaccinated. Yes, interesting. I have three more weeks and I get to have my second shot and I am really anxious for that. Boy, I'm going to look like I've been playing with berries. <laughs> I think it's the silk thread that's letting things go, letting color go. So my husband made his cold brew coffee 
the other day. So I had this huge, because he makes it enough for a week at a time, <clears throat> I had this huge pile of coffee grounds. So I dumped them all in a big pot and added water in the big, like huge, huge pot, added water, boiled those for a while, strained it, dyed fabric, still had coffee left over, went and got a bunch of envelopes. Jana, it's tax season for her. So I know her office is really busy. So she may not, she's working. So she may not be able to pop in. It's kind of hit and miss lately for a lot of people. So now I'm going to have a big stack of coffee dyed envelopes. And what else did I do? And then I threw an index card, index cards, because I still had coffee left. And then I had a bunch of paper that I didn't like the colors on them and they needed something else. So then I tossed them in the tub and I still have coffee left. And in a few days, he's going to do it all over again. So I'm going to need to do a lot of coffee dyeing. Gadgety Mouse says, I still have the 96 set of crayons from when I was a kid. And I've been using the same 10 crayons for a year. So I think that's going to be a lifetime supply. Yeah. I probably have a lifetime supply of Neocolor crayons. I fell in love with them. And then I was afraid I wouldn't be able to get some more for some reason. I have no idea why. So then I bought more and it's like, okay, I, you know, I should have just stuck, you know, I tend to buy things that have a whole bunch of colors and then I really only use like that. I use like the same 10 colors over and over again. So um, I'm not going to buy if I, I don't need to buy anything, but if I bought anything else, I don't need to buy big sets with a variety of colors because I just don't use them. Now we're starting to get some, potential here. So what is your least favorite part of putting together a journal? What is your least favorite part? I am still not a fan of sewing things in. Just not my favorite thing to do. Alcohol markers. What can you do with um, alcohol markers other than drawing and coloring? I bought some for my new planner, but bought the alcohol ones instead of normal ones and they bleed through. So you can, uh, let's, let's help Victoria out here. And Jojo, I hear you on the colored pencils. I gave a bunch of my colored pencils away because I don't use them all. Um, what can Victoria do with alcohol markers? Well, you can uh, color fabric with it. It's going to bleed through, but it's going to be permanent when you get that. Least favorite part. Let me come over here. Marjorie says the cover. Victoria says sewing in. Barbara says picking out the paper. Oh, that's my favorite part. Midge is with us on um, sewing in the signatures. Barbie just bought a new camcorder. Oh, you're going to have fun now, not having to use your phone all the time. Least favorite is stitching in the signatures. Hey, Rand Randy, right? Dreamy Bohemian. You love sewing in the lo love sewing in the journey journals. Wow. Um, Terry, I think it's called book text journals. Yeah, alcohol markers on fabric, then spray it with alcohol to make it run. Let me see if I can find that. Uh, I think it was called. Uh, yeah, Terry, um, they have book text journal. Both of the both of them have book text journals in the cover in the title. If you could grab the links on those. Yay, I got it right. I remembered. Dreamy Bohemian is Randy. Linda says sewing in the signatures. Yeah. Brenda says trying to embellish the pockets, pages, and et cetera. You don't have the knack for it. Well, I don't know. I loved your um, page that you posted in the group. I'm looking forward to seeing your video later. You can also, I mean, they're brand new markers. You're not going to want to make your own alcohol inks from it, but you can, you know, leave them in a little tub of um, 
in a bottle with some alcohol and drain the color into that. You can um, use them as a background on a page, you know, do some scribbles to do some mark making, and then you'll be able to paint and spray over the top of it. Embrace the bleed. Oh, good tip, Barbara. She says, Barbara Owen does a Mandela with alcohol markers on fabric. Draw around a plastic plate, then make a rough Mandela in the middle, then put fabric on top of the plate and spray it with alcohol. You could also use your alcohol markers on uh, acetate, like I did when I did the um, alcohol ink tags with the dried flowers on them. So then you could... Um, you know, just scribble and then drip some alcohol on those and they'll spread a little bit. Yeah, not for your planner. Exactly. I'd probably use, um, if you wanted pins that weren't going to bleed through, I, I don't know, maybe gel pins might be the thing to do. Are you having fun coming up with ways that you want to work on that planner? Yeah, gesso on any kind of a page, but not she's not going to gesso in her planner, but that's a good point, too, is if you do the gesso. Thank you, Terry. That's it. So that's the link that Terry just put up there is making using your sheer fabric over book text to make a journal cover. Yeah, I would definitely, you know, you could use the um, alcohol markers on acetate and <laughs> oh, something else she can think about, though. If she's using it on something else, she can do the gesso. I don't use gesso nearly enough as I should. It's a good item to have in your toolbox. Gadgety Mouse says, I use mine as an erasable pin. I label everything like plastic box storage, Ziploc bags with Sharpies, and then erase with alcohol. <laughs> That's good. Cheryl has enough gel pens for everyone. <laughs> I did too, because I found a really good brand and I kept buying them. And then I ended up giving them to a friend with kids. Barbie says, I've not used alcohol markers much, but I use a mixture of vinegar and water to set the inks in my fabric. Oh, that's interesting. I like that. What are you just starting? Oh, you're just starting to use gesso more, Brenda. You love it now? Yeah, I mean, it, it opens up a lot of opportunities with different materials. Thank you, Terry. There's the other link for the other um, one on using the sheer fabric. Victoria, I have a huge tub that actually split it's separated. I don't know if I can pull it all back together again or not. So I, um, but I did buy some newer stuff in smaller containers because I don't know why I thought I needed like a gallon of that stuff. I guess it was when I was doing canvas work. Mariah says she loves her alcohol ink markers. So what do you use them for? I have um, pit pins, my India ink markers, and I love those. But they don't they don't really spread. You can you can kind of smudge them a little bit if you want, but they don't spread like the alcohol ink ones do. Okay, Barbara, how long is your cordage now? I'm sure you're much farther along than I am. I definitely did not prep these the way I normally do. Wow, definitely got pink fingers. Yeah, they are great on the torn edges of a page. Yeah. Nice way to get some different colors other than the distress inks, and they're going to stay better on the pages.
So what supply don't you have on your shelves that you wish that you had or that you're running out of and you need to go stock up on? Not that we ever need to go stock up on anything, right? But I actually think I was looking at what I was going to start to do. I need to go buy glue, ship, glue sticks. Oh, good. So you've, you've got it down 13 inches now. That's awesome. Added four new bunches of that junk thread. That's terrific. I just remembered I still have a whole bag, big garbage bag full of threads that that weaver gave me, and they're still sitting in the trunk of my car. Yeah, you don't want to overdo it. But at least now, now you understand the process. That's terrific. Yeah, you got to seal the, the alcohol markers, alcohol inks of any kind you need to seal. Oh, my goodness, Victoria. No, she did not tell me that you and Brenda had a chit chat last night on FaceTime. Three hours. Oh, my goodness. That's fabulous. That makes me happy. Connections. Happy times. Barbara says she wove in a fabric strip and the junk thread is lovely along with the more stable piece. That sounds marvelous. I would love it if you could post a picture in the group. Mariah says she, she wants a cricket maker, I think. <laughs> I have gone back and forth on whether I wanted a machine, an embossing machine, a cutting machine, a die cut machine, any of that stuff. A oh, laughter like that is good. I have a couple of artsy friends that I'm like that with. You, you two, it makes sense. You two are two peas in a pod. You really are. Tender wants a crocodile. I don't use mine as much as I thought I would. I stink at setting my eyelets with it. So I use it to punch a hole and then I use a hammer to set my eyelet. Oh, you got the Cameo 4 and sent it back? I was looking at the Gemini. I just, I don't know. You know, of course, you're branching out now with the other stuff that you're doing. Victoria wants a scan and cut, but she's still so torn. Yeah, I just, I don't think I would use a machine, so I'm, I'm holding back. Barbie says, I have so much stuff for every craft known. I can't think of anything I need. <laughs> But you don't have a cricket. <laughs> I would like a um, more than a, a cutting machine. I can see the flickerings happening again for some reason. I would like a heat press. I think there's a lot of things I could do with the heat press, like um, eco printing that way, botanical printing really fast without the water. Brenda says, I'm do, uh, doing an intro for my new cookbook I'm making for my granddaughter. Oh, how sweet. Yeah, everything seems to be plugged in right, so I don't know. Don't know. I pulled those ends off because it was really bugging me, so I'm going to start another piece here. All right, so Brenda says what... Um, you're filming after the live. You just finished printing off the kitten. Oh, fun. Cannot wait to see what you're going to do with it all, Brenda. Randy says, I was just fighting with my sewing machine. Ordered a part because my bobbin holder is acting up and wondering if I need a new sewing machine. Is there one I can't tear? <laughs> you're hard on them, huh? I kind of, sort of would like to have a fancier sewing machine. One that would um, that was set up for free motion printing but not enough that I'm going to invest in it right now. Yeah, the heat press, I mean, I, I just keep thinking, if I buy a piece of equipment, if I get the garage studio set up, I might. Oh, Gadgety Mouse, we can do jelly printing maybe next week if you want. I, I have that on my list of videos to be working on. Not sure you really get it. You can also do a lot of the stuff without a gel plate.
Midge needs more space to put all my stuff I keep buying. <laughs> Ah, Brenda's birthday's tomorrow. She got some Amazon gift certificates, so she's going to order a mini embossing machine. Nice. Barbara, I get that. Yeah, do some couching with. I think that makes great for couching. Some long snippets. JoJo needs more copy paper, cardstock, and Fabri Fix. Yeah, I was going to do something with the jelly plate and my leaves. Um, I had some jelly print papers that I had done ages ago that were just kind of, you know, the, the first couple layers. They're not very exciting. So I just tossed them in the tub with my excess coffee dye. We'll see what happens. Yeah, the jelly plate, you know, I just need to do the jelly plate when I'm ready to have a big mess out for a while, because once I get it all the stuff out, I don't like to put it all away. I want to just keep playing. Yeah, an eight and a half by 11 embossing machine. Wouldn't that be nice rather than everything being designed for scrapbook paper? Oh, Barbie and Brenda share a birthday. Happy birthday, you two. Victoria said she had to play with her sewing machine earlier and made some embellishments clusters. Ah, uh, no worry, Victoria. I saw you had downloaded them, so I get a message when they've been downloaded. I'm glad you got them. I can't wait to see how you you use them. Mariah, I was going to PM you after this. Yes, I did get my envelope. I think I must have screwed up your address because I checked with my friend. I had mailed her a card the same day I mailed your stuff and her stuff got to New Jersey before your stuff got to you. Brenda's been using a pasta machine for the embossing. I just use a rolling pin. I don't do a whole lot of it, but I've been using a rolling pin. I only have like three embossing folders. So Mariah, I think I'm going to need to redo it. But Mariah, um, Terry or Victoria, if somebody could grab Mariah's shop link. Um, Mariah is doing stencils. In addition to her beautiful paper, she's starting to make stencils. And so she's got a couple stencil kits in her shop that are really cool. Yeah, Randy, because <laughs> I didn't want to buy a machine because I wasn't sure if I would use it enough. Um, but you can do that. You just it, it, you have to wet the paper that you're going to emboss and put it in the folder and then just, you know, it takes some some strength. Yeah. So I've used it. Um, I'll have to do a few of those. I think Tracy did a video on it ages ago and a couple of other people. Um, yeah, just, you know, like any embossing, if you, you know, dampen the paper, like I put the paper in the folder and then I spray it and then use the rolling pin. Yeah, the die cutting, I, I don't use it for die cutting. I think Tracy's video showed how she tried to, to do the die cutting with it and some of the cut, the dies worked and some didn't. Terry, it's right there, PM Artist Studio. right there on the, the same as it is on the screen. That's her shop. All right, let's add another one in here. Yeah, I don't emboss a lot, but I'm, I'm getting some ideas. Yeah, and you know, Barbara, the, the love-hate thing with the die cut machines, that's kind of why I haven't invested in one because I hear so much, it's like, I think I would get more out of investing in a heat press machine. Well, that's good news, Victoria. Can't believe you have to do that twice a week now, wow. I'm just gonna switch colors but since my fingers are pink, I think I'll just be working on pink today.
Yeah, I just have like the small five by seven folders, but I'm starting to get some ideas of how I might want to do some more embossing on things. But I think it'll it'll be a while before I feel like I've overused what I, you know, like gotten to the point where I'm sick, sick of what I have. Brenda says, my thing is I'm left-handed and everything is right-handed and that's my weakest. Oh, that's hard. Barbara says, I can't ever figure out how to get a good clean cut except with my Sizzix sidekick limited to two and a quarter inches wide. Wow. What, what is the point of something that tiny? I guess for greeting cards, huh? That's probably where the die cutting really started, right? Is for greeting cards. Thanks, Terry. Ah, Mariah, thanks for printing out those blue papers. I can't wait to see what you do those. Embossing leaves when I coffee dye my papers. Um, like putting the um, coffee dyed paper into the embossing folder. So far, all I have done was just, uh, what did I do it with? I think I did packing paper. I just did a few pieces and I couldn't figure out what I was going to do with it. So greeting cards, ATC, yeah. Ah, like eco prints when copy dyeing. Yeah, I haven't I haven't done them in the embossing folders yet. Said I just don't really I have like three folders and I need to get back to making journal. Well, actually, I'm going to be making kits. I gutted a ton of books, 56 books I gutted. And so I thought, well, I'm going to, um, I'll start a series on making paper for the books and we'll go through the whole <clears throat> journal making thing. And then I'll put these kits together. All right. So here's the next question for you. What is your favorite way to get color? On paper do you have a favorite way or do you bounce around I mean I love doing the the eco printing of course to get the leaves on the paper I love sprays anything that's in a spray I see the flickers back Ugh. I love spraying stuff what's the oh wow for Brenda what is oh wowing you Sprays, then markers, says Mariah. Barbara says, jelly print is the favorite way to get color on the paper. <laughs> Brenda says, buy it. Randy says, water down acrylic in a spray bottle. Barbie says, using watercolors and pastels with, oh, I love the pastels too. Mm. So Mariah, you use markers a lot after you've done a spray. Do you doodle or are you just using it to kind of shade? Oh yeah, the 50, the wow for the 56 books. Yeah, we were working in the garage this weekend and I look on the shelves because I'm trying to think of, I need more room to kind of set up the garage studio. And I had like five shelves of hardback books that were just when my mom finishes reading a book, she sends it to me and then I read it. And most of the time they're ones that are just going to go off to goodwill uh, or I'll share them, you know, with friends that I think might enjoy them. And I was like, you know, I could just keep these because they're the right size for journals. And I didn't realize they had piled up to where I had so many. So I just um, gutted them all. I figured they'll take up less space. And then I will have the, I'll shred the inside so then I can make paper. So Mariah says her mom likes gel paint printing for getting color on. Barbara says adding extra spots of color, Tim Holtz delusion marking crayons. Ah. Barbara loves spraying instant coffee. I love um, the watercolor powders, my Lindy's Magicals, and the Ken Oliver, and the Brusho. I love those. You can drop them on and then hit them with water. You can put some in a bottle. 
And I do love my distress sprays. Absolutely love the distress sprays. I don't care that they, you know, run with the water. I love the what happens when the water hits them. Mariah says she uses the markers more for shading, touching up edges, usually working with printed papers. So it's more for effect than creating a design. You haven't tried gel plating? Oh my goodness. Mariah, what is your favorite way to, to, is that what you do to take care of like the white edges or can you print like for those people that can't print borderless when they're printing a kit, any tips for how they can, you know, take care of the edges? Tunder loves gelatos and brushes. Yeah, brushes are awesome. I love brushes. You know, you don't need to have, I mean, a gel plate is nice. And of course you can make your own, but you can also do the same, very similar thing with a um, acrylic piece of acrylic from a picture frame. Heck, take a piece of cardboard. Cardboard actually might work better and cover it with um, plastic wrap. $42 Canadian dollars to order vintage photo from Amazon. Oh my goodness. Go look at the Ranger website and order from them directly. I think if you haven't ordered from them before, your first order, I'm not sure if it works for Canada, but they give you a pretty big discount. That's insane. Oh, that flickering. I'm sorry, guys. I know it's got to be annoying. So this video today was as a request from Barbara to uh, go over cordage again so she could get it and she nailed it. So let's get some input what you guys would like to see. Wait a minute, Gadgety Mouse, how did we know? I did not know that you were right near here because I'm in Scotts Valley. Um, let's see, trying to remember. Yes. Uh, are we connected on Facebook? Boulder Creek Crafters. If you're in the area and you can join Boulder Creek Crafters, there is a gal on there. Um, uh, Ruth Daly was collecting things, collecting um, art supplies to donate to fire victims that had lost everything. Also in Felton or Boulder Creek, I think maybe it's in Boulder Creek, there's a new little craft store that opened up and she donates, she takes in donations and then people can go down and, you know, pick up what they need for free. I'm pretty sure that's what she does. But message me if you're not in the Facebook group, um, join the group, but send me a message because I do check the other messages. Anyways, Gadgety Mouse, I'm sorry. And if we're already connected and I've forgotten your name, I apologize. Oh, Brenda, that is so sweet. I uh, Yeah, Artie Mays uses them a lot. Gosh, that flickering is annoying. Hey, Marie. Barbara, look at you, or Terry, look at you. You are a pro now. So you guys need to let me know what you would like to see in the lives. So I've got about a foot. And I will uh, put together a list. I guess I could do a poll in the group, although I'm going to start the first poll is going to be on the business stuff. And you're nailing it, Terry. And then just keep those links that you've got, you know, on your little checklist. And you'll have them. Oh, I'm very happy I was able to do it for you, Barbara. I kind of wanted to get back to working on some cordage anyways. Ah, okay, Gadgety Mouse. Um, you can email me, SusanTaylorBrown at gmail.com. No spaces or lines or anything like that. Send me an email and we can chat that way. Um, and I will, you know, find the names of the people and contact information for you. 
but happy to, to try and help you hook up. Barbara's got six inches. That's awesome. Oh, I'm, I am so tickled that you guys are doing that along with me. So tickled. You know, and I used hardly any threads and you can make it thicker. And the other thing is, once you have it like this, if you want it even thicker, you can start twisting this again and make an even bigger piece. But I, I'm definitely looking forward to doing some weaving. There's Janet. They were asking about you. Yeah, it's a busy, busy season. Happy to see you here today. So let's see, what questions did we ask that we missed out on from Janet? Um, what craft supply do you have a lifetime supply of? And what don't you have on your in your art room that you wish you had? I know you've been reorganizing yours, making it so beautiful. Barbara says, I keep a trash can by my sewing machine to save thread and fabric pieces. Yeah. Okay. And you guys will probably understand this. I was in a meeting the other day and I had... I had little strips like this. This is like a seam. And I, you know, I saved these because I think I can weave with, with these. But I sat there and I literally was fraying the edges and pulling the threads out from that. How nuts is that, right? At, like I don't have enough thread to make, you know, cordage with right now. Janet has a lifetime supply of buttons. Oh, that's fun. Hey, Arlene, how are you feeling? Hope you're doing well. Let's all send our friend Margaret Berry some good vibes for surgery that she's having today. Arlene, what do you have a lifetime supply of? I know you do a lot of, you know, you, you like to do the upcycling of what you already have, but do you have a lifetime supply of something? But Janet says, but it won't keep me from accumulating more. Oh, you too, Brenda, huh? I used to have a lot of buttons. And then I, I mistakenly messed up and put my vintage buttons in with my much more overwhelming modern buttons. And Barbara, that's right. You can pull, especially because you have dyed fibers dyed um, fabric that you can pull the threads from. Plus, maybe it uses different muscles that might not hurt your hands as much. Because I have so many of these strips. I have a huge, I mean, like a, um, a move medium-sized moving box full of nothing but these seams that I've cut off of uh, clothing, because I'm usually upcycling the clothing. And I do think I'm going to try and weave with them because they're they're, I mean, they're irregular, and that's kind of part of the appeal. Uh, Terry put Barbara's channel, uh, Barbie's channel up there. And if you haven't checked out Barbie's channel, she has got some beautiful videos. You will be inspired by making journals. Her, I just love her journals. I bought one of her journals. That's how much I love them. Hey, Victoria. Yeah, I figured we needed some help. You were doing it all on your own, and that way nobody's got the whole, you know, got to deal with the whole thing. That's what you were using in your cord. It makes great for weaving. Oh, good to know. Yeah. Well, I do appreciate having mod helpers because... I just, I couldn't, it'd be harder for me to go back and forth and find stuff. Jojo, I'm glad you were able to join us for a little bit today. I'm looking forward to seeing your next video. Oh, Jude, thank you so much. Happy to see you here. I sent you an email. I don't know if you got it. <sighs> Dang, girl, you make me cry when you do that. Thank you. Brenda, I agree. There's something about sorting buttons, and I'm sure a lot of us did it with um, our grandmothers, and so it brings back some childhood memories. I know when I was here, and of course, you got a five-minute break. Well, kisses to you, babe. Miss you. Hope you're doing okay. 
My grandmother would give me her little button tin to play with when I was underfoot while she was sewing. Ah, so Arlene's got the opposite thing. She uses everything up. She is an anti-hoarder. Barbara says, we've been making masks here. My partner's made like 500 of them. Lots of skinny strips. Wow. Oh, you're going to have fun using all those up. Victoria says, a lifetime supply of paper. Oh, and packaging. With me, it's the brown pa packing paper. I could not resist saving brown packing paper. Hey, Lori, girl on the ridge. How are you today? Did you guys see the fun video that Lori and Maggie did last night making the little folders, mini file folders? They always have so much fun crafting together. If you're depressed, you need to go watch one of the Lori and Maggie videos because you will not be depressed at the end of it. You will be laughing along with them and probably creating something really awesome. So we're talking about lifetime supplies. What do you have a lifetime supply of, Lori? I bet you have a lifetime supply of lace, right? What does Jude have a lifetime supply of? Randy's got a lifetime supply of fabric. Hey, Patty. I've been having the flickering video issues like you were having the other night. Victoria said she made her clusters with packaging paper as my base. Yeah, I love using, I mean, you can just put out a piece of packing paper and then just start stitching the clusters on it and then tear it apart and you get those wonderful uneven edges. Lori's got a lifetime supply of lace and fabric paper, <laughs> fabric and paper. Yeah. Patty, what do you have a lifetime supply of? Dude's got a lifetime supply of vintage and antique lace. My weakness. Yeah. I have to start making things with lace. I've been buying all this lacy stuff at uh, Esme's shop. Oh yeah, the packing paper. I've done that. It's just it's wonderful. You just lay it out and whether you're working with with um fabric or paper clusters, whatever you're doing, you know, you pile them up, stitch around this one, then you make another one over here, stitch around it, and you get them all stitched and then you tear and you've got these wonderful irregular edges that just of course add to the character. Patty has a lifetime supply of all my favorite things. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Let me go back up here. So what do you want to go buy? I think I want to buy, not this week, but my on my future purchase list is a steam press. Anybody else that wasn't here earlier when we were talking about it? What's on your I want to buy this list? Wow, I'm guessing old silk thread is not color fast. <laughs> Hydrate, yes, Victoria, thank you. Oh, it looks like the sun is finally coming up outside. I'll be able to take all my coffee dyed papers and fabric outside to hopefully dry up. Lori said, I just ordered a calligraphy pen in the ink. Ooh, I do not have a steady enough hand. I mean, my, my normal handwriting is so horrible. I would love to be able to do calligraphy, but that is not going to be mine. Patty wants a new studio streaming building just for me. Ooh, <laughs> is that a possibility? Could you build a place that's just yours? That would be very cool. I started thinking uh, this morning before I, I was just kind of laying in bed trying to wake up because we're hitting into fire season now and I need to do a new video of the house and pictures and stuff for insurance pur purchases. 
And I started thinking, okay, if, if we lost everything, the house burned to the ground and we had to start over again, what would we want to do differently, you know, with the house build? How would we want to put it together any differently? And uh, that was kind of interesting. I would definitely have a wet studio place set up. Oh, it's funny you would say that, Gadgety Mouse, the um, Asamic writing. I just watched a video on that last night. Um, yeah, so there's some stuff coming up on that as well. I agree. I don't know how you say it, but dude's finishing our tiny home. You've been working like crazy on that. I hope you guys get things done soon so you can relax a little bit. Janet's looking for a little cute pair of scissors that have to actually be functional, right, at the same time. Let's see here. Mariah also wants a studio or a warehouse or an old hotel. Oh, that would be cool. Patty says... I think we're actually building a garage for the hubs and I'll take the one that's attached to the house. That's awesome. Functional tiny little scissors. Yeah. Anybody got any recommendations of those? I need, I think I probably need to get another pair. Of, these are the little singer ones. They are super sharp. I have actually cut my skin with them. Love you too, Jude. Okay, check messages later. Take care. Learn lots of good stuff. Yeah, the um, Simic writing or whatever it is called that you mentioned, Gadgety Mouse, that was really interesting. The idea that we tend to use um, the same symbols in our work and, you know, you just writing scribbles underneath your work and then adding more layers over the top of it. Barbara wants a small motor home. <laughs> and, and you found you, you clicked it and you found yourself, huh, Patty? <laughs> Too funny. I don't have really big things. I maybe wouldn't mind a new car, but that doesn't have anything to do with artsy stuff here. Barbara says, I have We Are Tiny Scissors that are great, super sharp. Ah, because you love the Fusty Cut. I think Janet does a lot of <clears throat> cross stitch and slow stitching, so... I think tiny scissors for embroidery kind of stuff. Barbie says, I love my craft mini house. It's a small 10 by 16, but it is all my space. Yeah. Terry says, I need a storage trailer. <laughs> well, you had to downsize. You moved from, you know, a big place to a smaller place, right? That's really tough. Yeah, I don't know if I could, you know, if we had to rebuild a place, I don't know that I could give up sitting in here looking out at the view out front, you know, when I work, but we might lay things out differently. Barbara says, I don't love to fussy cut, but have to because no scanning cut. Yeah. Gadgety Mouse says, I need a system for storing projects in progress. Ah. Okay, so there's a good time. Everybody share your system for storing projects in progress. Me, I use, I probably don't have one handy. Ah. I use these white tubs, laundry tubs. I get them at the dollar store for a buck. And my projects are in there. If they're long-term storage for projects, they go in Ziploc bags. Let's see, I'm missing stuff here. 
Oh, Mariah. Okay. Well, when I do my video that I'm going to do about that kind of writing, I'll make sure I share the stencil. Yeah, it has that kind of a feel. You're right. Uh, Arlene, make sure you see Patty's message to you. That's very sweet. Wait a minute here. Terry, you still have a garage to empty up north? Oh my goodness, girl. Wow. Randy says, slow st stitching is my nemesis. <laughs> Barbara, sometimes there's a system. I bet Mariah is super organized with her stuff. Thank you, Barbie. I do not see the back. You know, now that's something I hadn't thought about. If I, if, if a fire came through and we lost everything and I had to start over, maybe I would put my studio in the backyard. It would have to still be connected to the house. I don't like having to leave the house. But that, that is something I might think about. I'm looking at the front yard, which I really need to do a video so you guys can see this place too. It doesn't have a lot of, um, it, it's a much smaller area. It's up higher, but the bunnies are still destroying everything out here too. So I'm, uh, I'm a little frustrated. Brenda uses bins to store her stuff. Arlene says, when the kids and grands all moved out and settled down, my craft room became my apartment. <laughs> ah, so you have these, Brenda. I like these. These are singers. They're very sharp. Mariah says we use job folders like the ones they use at the dealership. Oh, God, dude, <laughs> that is my old website. We're actually in the process of redoing it. But yeah, that's my that's my old website. There'll be a new one coming up maybe in about a month. Thank you for sharing that. That's sweet. Brenda would like a craft store. Hey, then you could get a discount on getting all those supplies, right? Cheryl says, I use individual gift boxes for my projects in progress. The shirt size seems to work perfectly. You know, I did that for a while too. I I bought at the container store, I bought heavy duty gift boxes and they were really good for storing things except that I couldn't see what was inside them. And I realized that I need to, um, I need to see what's inside things. Okay. Arlene, make sure you see Patty's note. Yeah. Mariah, the rabbits. Oh, you guys, like I said, that's an old one. So see it now because all of it's going to go away. I'm taking down all the writing stuff. It's way too dense, too much out writing. And really the art stuff was when I was first playing with art. It doesn't have any of the new stuff. So the new website's going to be completely different with just one page. Hey, Sharon. Hello, hello. And I owe you some files. I just remembered that as soon as I saw your name, I never sent them to you. So I will be sending them shortly. Randy says um, she heard the 12 by 12 paper pad storage boxes like scrapbook supply kind is a good project story storage option. That's a good idea. She stores hers in a Michaels put together drawer cabinet thingy. Bye Jude. Take care. Love you. Terry uses banana boxes for storage. Current projects go in box trays. Barbara stores projects that are underway in clear zippered storage envelopes. Lots of ideas of things to do with storage. All right, let's see if we can get this guy joined on. Well, since my fingers are pink, maybe I'll just make a whole bunch more pink strands. You are fabulous. I like hearing that fabulous. Okay, Sharon, you have to at least answer the one question of the day, which is what do you have a lifetime supply of in your craft studio? We're also talking right now about how to store current projects. 
Barbara says, I have one of those 12 by 12 scrapbook storage boxes that holds hanging file folders. So I've got a project section in there. Marie says, I store in two gallon zipper bags. Yeah. I like storing fabric things in the bags, threads and stuff, but then I like to see stuff. I have to be able to see what's going on. Yeah, Arlene, you are the queen of all that recycling. That is awesome. She gets an Amazon or home sew box. It's the correct size out of the recycle, decorates it, and then she has a new container. I'll share, and it's, you know, those of you, um, I'll put out another request. If anybody wants, anybody here in the chat would like to have a kit or two from me that they can play with, if they will do me the honor of making a video of how they use the kit, I will send you the kit for free. Bye-bye, Maria. You just need to drop me a note. Barbie, if you want something, send me an email or send me a note on Etsy and I'll send you a kit. Yeah, I'm about done here today anyways, Mariah. So <clears throat> Sharon is an emoji queen, huh? I love them. I can never find them when I want them. Yeah, Randy has a, I think her YouTube channel is Dreamy Bohemian. So what should we do next week? Yeah, just send me a note, Barbie. Take a look at the shop and send me a note over on Etsy and then tell me what email to send the kits to and I will be happy to send you something. The faces you're making as you're typing. <laughs> yeah, I same same issue, Patty. I just I can't operate them very well. On the PC laptop, right click your mouse in the chat box and it says emoji right at the top. Oh, okay. I'll try that when I'm in somebody else's live chat. <laughs> I'll try that when I'm at Patty's so I don't mess myself up. Oh, Tundra, that's so frustrating when you want to work and you can't print. Very frustrating. So do you guys have something that you want to do next week? Or should I put a quote a poll up in the shop or in the shop in the um, group? But if you have something you want to do next week, let me know now. I love not having to think about it ahead of time. Patty managed it and you're still here. Look at that. And a black heart. <laughs> Sharon, you'll, you'll get addicted. Jelly print, should we jelly print next week? Arlene says, my Mac doesn't like emojis. When I click to get them, the live stream stalls, so I rarely use them, okay. Anywhere you wanna write a comment, I'm gonna remember that. All right, we have one vote for jelly printing next week. Jelly, yes, okay. All right, you guys, now I need to see. I wonder, well, it probably won't work where I am right now. Let's see. No, I have too many, too many different other things going on. I'll do it. I'll do it the next time in Patty's group. All right, next week we will do jelly printing. If you want to play along, you can get yourself set up. Hey, Lucy. Lucy? Hello, hello. All right, next week is jelly. It'll be a very jelly day. Could use some tips. Okay, well, I'm not a pro, but I can show you what I do and we can all share the knowledge and we can, um, we can see how I mess things up and go from there. <laughs> That's how we learn, right? <laughs> 
think this is the first time you've been here with us, Lucy. Thank you for joining. I'm coming towards the end, but you love watching people do jelly prints. <laughs> Yeah, I, it'll actually be good to get me back into that because I haven't done any for ages and <clears throat> I want to do them on <laughs> on a variety of papers. Janet says, I will not be jellying along with you. I can't imagine what my boss would say as he walked in to see you covered in paint. <laughs> that would be a, an interesting explanation. Okay, jelly print next Wednesday uh, from Quebec, Canada. We still have any of our other, Lorna wasn't here today. What kind of crafting do you enjoy doing, Lucy? I am making cordage. If you go back to the beginning of the stream, you'll see how I started this, but this is just using up all my scrap threads. Hey, Maggie, you spaced out on the time. <laughs> Arlene, I love jelly printing on fabric too. I think I might I might do some of that because that's really what I enjoy doing. Oh, there we go. Vic, um, Terry got Randy's YouTube channel in there. Mixed media. Ah. Do you have a YouTube channel, Lucy? If you're on Facebook, I would love to have you join the Facebook group. We're small and we're just sharing all our different artsy ideas. Not yet. Okay, well, if you're on Facebook, there should be a link down in the description of how to join the group. So many Bohemians. <laughs> well, you know, we artsy types, right? We're Bohemians. Art passion, yeah, absolutely. Oh, on Instagram. Okay. Art Passion Lucy on Instagram. Are you on Facebook, Lucy? So I might bring out the small jelly plates just because, you know, um, Gadgety Mouse, I have both. Oh, thanks. Victoria put the link up for the Facebook group. I have both brands of jelly plates and I'm not enough of a perfectionist in that area. Shock of shocks. And uh, I just, they, they both work fine for me. I don't have a problem with either one. Well, you know, we're all active in our own way, whatever works for us in our creative lives. Not everybody can be doing it full time. Thank you, Victoria. There's Lucy's Instagram account. I need to. There we go. Awesome. Maggie's got a five by seven. You haven't used it yet. A friend sent it to you. Yeah, get it out. Next week, we're going to do jelly plate. I'm going to get out my small plates because I have a lot of the small ones and I just really love them. Um, yeah, the five by seven jelly plate. I've got the small one. I've got the little, like the, the four inch square, the circle, the triangle. I've got like a six inch circle, which I really love. So mouse... Um, Barbara says, my favorite size right now, or favorite plate is the Delusions plate that's about five and a half by 11. Yeah. I've got the big 14 inch one too. And that's really nice when you're trying to do a bunch of fabric. Lucy says, I am new in social media, but more than 35 years in art. Oh, I'm looking forward to going and checking you out and getting to know you. Randy, I use the smaller ones best because my biggest pain is I don't like um, the have, trying to worry about getting the paint all over the edges. I, I guess I am a little bit of a perfectionist about that. So I like the smaller ones, but I use the bigger ones. Oh, I love the little ones. I, my favorite is probably like a six inch round. I really enjoy the six inch round plate.
Yeah, what Patty said is one supposed to stop if you're creating and you're having a good time, keep going if you can. It's like th this cordage here now, you know, now that I've started back to making cordage, you know, this is probably going to be it for me the rest of the week. I'm going to keep making cordage, although I am still working on my stitching and I got to do the next that purple layer I told you about Sharon, it's coming up. Ah, there's Brenda, one of our other Canadians. Sharon, there's something um, some people do is they get a big, they get a second big one and they cut it into pieces. And then you can have them the different shapes that you want, or you can do like Tender did and make your own. Yeah, the Facebook group, the whole idea of the Facebook group is just to share all kinds of art. Oh, but then you can't use it. Yeah, you know, we need to do we need to do a video about that, right? About just how we we create all this stuff and then we don't want to use it. And why? Why is that? When I had all this leftover coffee today, I uh, went to look and you know, I opened all the cabinets. And it's like, okay, I need some stuff that I can throw in the coffee. And I had these really cute little tiny white coin envelopes. And I had a big stack of them. And it's like, why? Why do I save these? You know, I'm not going to use them when they're white. They need to have some color on them. And then I can collage or paint over the top of that. So I just toss them all in the coffee. Barbara, you don't, you can tie a knot if you want to. But you can, you know, because when you want to use it, you can cut it and it's going to stay tied because you've twisted it so well. Randy says, I was kind of the mindset that the larger one would cover all the small ones. So I've just done full pit. Yeah, that works too. Yeah, I know, Sharon. I went, somebody had a sale somewhere and I said, screw it. I went ahead and indulged and I bought like a whole bunch of the small ones. And I really enjoy the small ones. Plus, you can use them as a palette if you want or as a stamp. You do something on that and then use it as a stamp. So I will probably be working with leaves. Those of you that have any leaves, uh, they can be fake leaves too if you have some plastic leaves. Sharon says, I made my first plate and love it. It tore slightly the other day. Well, see, if it tore, then, then you can make it into a smaller plate. <laughs> Barbara likes the five by seven plate. Also like the three by five. Yeah. How long do I think my fingers will be? Pink? I don't think it's going to be very long. This is, I think this is the old silk thread. I had uh, my husband's grandmother's old silk thread, but it did cover the coffee because my, my fingers were pretty brown this morning from playing in the coffee. Any plate that you can get your hands on, it doesn't matter, really. The brand, what what does matter is the brayer. Do not, um, you know, make sure you get one that's, you know, a paint brayer and not one for um, shoot, uh, for the, the ink. Ah, there's a different kind of brayer that they use for something else, not the uh, speedball. Oh, I will say the speedball, jelly plate does not have the best reputation from what I've heard. But, you know, really, and if you don't have a jelly plate, there are some alternatives that you can do that you can get something close enough to it. I like a piece of cardboard that I've covered with plastic wrap. Yeah, cut up the one that's tore. Absolutely. <laughs> You know, it's there, it's falling apart, then boom, you got your big one and now you got some smaller ones. Definitely, if you can, cut one that's in a circle, though. You will love having a circle. Yeah, the speedball brayer, I don't like that as much either as the other, whatever most popular one is, that red one. Don't get the Stampendous jelly plate. They're cheaper, and I fell for that first. Yeah, a brayer, you're going to need a brayer. Barbara says they make greeting cards. Five by seven is a great place to start. Yeah, I, I think a small plate to get started to see if you enjoy it. It's not quite as intimidating.
so yeah, just just put a plate on top of yours, trace it, and and cut it in a circle. And I think you'll love having having that. All right, guys, I think I am about done here today. I obviously am not going to make it through all my pink threads, but I knew that wasn't going to happen. Yeah, I won't. I'll, I'll tell you next week how many I have, but the number is more than four. <laughs> The number is definitely more than four, which is why I need to get the other desk cleaned off because once I start working with the jelly printing, I want to do a whole lot more of them. So I will do jelly printing next week if you want to play along with us. And I will be, I'll do some other mark making, but I will probably be doing some stuff with leaves because I wanted to show you guys how I use the leaves and registering the prints and stuff. All right. Uh, anybody else have anything they want to share before we sign off? You are very welcome, Barbara. I'm glad you got it. It finally all clicked for you and you're going to have fun. And I look forward to when you um, share us, share with us what you've been doing. Okay. See you guys all over in the group. Thank you so much for watching, for sticking with me with the flickering monitor. And I forgot to turn off the autofocus. Yay, Maggie. Glad you're going to join us for jelly printing. Bye, Tender. Bye, everybody. I'll see you next week. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for supporting one another. And go out and make some great art. All right? Bye-bye for now.